9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. It's 11 o'clock and the news from GB News is that MPs in the House of Commons have tonight rejected all ten amendments to the government's flagship Rwanda bill suggested by the House of Lords. All ten amendments were voted down tonight, one of which was designed to ensure the bill complies with domestic and international law. The controversial legislation aims to deter illegal migrants from coming to the UK on small boats by deporting them to Rwanda. Downing Street says the initial cohort of of people is now being contacted, with the Prime Minister still determined to see the first plane departing later this spring. Earlier on today, the Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper spoke to us at GP News. She said Labour would get a grip on the issue. We need to strengthen our border security and fix the chaos in the asylum system because under the Conservatives we've really seen criminal gangs take hold along the channel and then this huge soaring backlog with asylum hotel use that is costing the taxpayer billions. So instead of all the gimmicks that we've had from Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives, our plan is to get a grip. That starts with the new cross-border police to go after the criminal gangs, to smash the, the gang networks and prevent boats arriving on the French coast in the first place. Yvette Cooper. Now, Tata Steel will begin shutting down operations at its site in Port Albert from Wednesday. That's due to what they're calling stability concerns. The steel group said it had been forced to make the closures earlier than previously planned because the equipment can no longer run safely. Coke ovens are used to turn coal into coke, a key raw material used in the process of making steel. The former Environment Minister Zach Goldsmith has been banned from driving for a year. It's after he was caught breaking the speed limit seven separate times, driving in London between April and November last year. The Conservative peer was also caught speeding on two motorways, most recently in December, in his hybrid electric car. He pleaded guilty to all the offences and was fined £5,500 and ordered to pay a surcharge of £2,000-plus costs. The government's been warned that the sales of heat pumps will need to increase dramatically to achieve climate change targets. The government wants to install 600,000 low-carbon heat pumps annually by 2028. But the National Audit Office said ministers had been too optimistic to think that target could be reached. Despite the government's climate aims, only 55,000 heat pumps were sold in the UK in 2022. The independent public spending watchdog saying efforts to encourage people to install them have been slow because costs are high and public awareness is low. And finally, Britain's most successful female Olympian, Dame Laura Kenny, has announced her retirement from professional cycling. The athlete posted the news on Instagram, saying it was time to move on. The five-time gold medalist had been expected to compete at the Paris Games this summer. But the 31-year-old welcomed her second son last year and said spending her time at home with him and her family was now proving more important to her. For the latest stories, do sign up for GB News Alert, scan the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now time for headliners. Hello and welcome to Headliners. I'm Simon Evans. Joining me to sift through Tuesday's newspapers are the comedic talents of Leo Kurse and Paul Cox, and indeed their physical forms as well. Yeah, yeah. How are you? All right. Lovely, thanks, Simon. How are I you? had a whole week off last week. Did anything Did you... happen? Uh, you know? there, was, <laughs> there was newspapers every day, Simon. I vaguely remember that. So just You're a flurry the... yeah. here, some sort of automatic <laughs> distribution. Did you do anything with your week off? Like a hod, I toured. I was in Darlington, Hexham, Carlisle, and Glasgow. Nice and, and like nice, nice crowds. Beautiful weather spoons every step of the way. <laughs> and that's all that matters. But anyway, I must be careful not to uh, 
drift into commercial representation. <laughs> Let's have a look at Tuesday's front pages. Sorry, Mr. Com. Telegraph, kick us off. Reeves, Britain faces its 1979 moment. And uh, that'll be the birth of new romantic. N Daily Mail, Harry and Meghan are downgraded by the palace, but uh, still visible. Mirror, I will not let you down. That is Keir Starmer. iNews, energy customers set for payouts worth billions in a scandal that's bigger than PPI. Uh, the Express, migrants chosen for first flight to Rwanda in the spring. That sounds exciting. And Daily Star, this time next year, we'll be billionaires. So those be your front pages. So we're going to start with a particularly unusual front cover on the Daily Mail, Liam. So the Daily Mail has two royal specials. One is about Harry and Meghan being downgraded by the palace. I don't know if that's an investment grade or, or something like that. But the main story, the one that everybody cares about, the image the world has been waiting to see, smiling Kate out walking with William. Not, that's not the image of Kate I was waiting to see. But this is, <laughs> uh, you know, there's been speculation after weeks of Kate going missing with, yes. you know, with her operation not being seen. And then she released the, the picture that was revealed to have been photoshopped and possibly a composite of several different images. Uh, so now they've, they've released a photo of her out, shot, out, out at a... Um, out at a, was um, it a farm shop? Some sort of farm shop or, or um, plant centre type thing, nursery. Yeah. Uh, and people are saying that this... It's Kate. It doesn't look like Kate. It, I mean, it so it's, not, it's done nothing to quell the speculation <laughs> and the conspiracy theories. I mean, in fairness, uh, you know, some people have said it doesn't look like her, but they've only had a few days to find a look-alike or <laughs> tweak an Android. I don't know that they have. There must have been look-alikes making a decent living for the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. I mean, she's been a, an international celebrity. There yeah, must be high-grade look-alikes you could have be. got to a farm shop in Windsor. I, I have to say, because I, I don't buy into any of this conspiracy stuff, you know, I don't believe she's been on the moon, or I do think she's still alive, but that... I don't know if they've specifically chosen a particularly bad photograph to help <clears throat> feed this conspiracy, but that does not look anything like Kate, and I'm starting to think that doesn't look anything like William either. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't just not look like a, in, a, in a sort of... You can see how they were... how they might have thought it, but, it, I mean, it looked quite... Defiantly unlike her. Yeah, like, like quite pointedly unlike her. It's like when James Bond went away and he came back yes. and he wasn't Scottish anymore. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. He's, she's the Aussie version. Yeah. I, I think it's really odd. She doesn't even. I, I'm reminded of uh, Charles Moore, the editor of the uh, Telegraph and Spectator occasionally, who got into some trouble for saying that uh, Olivia Coleman had the wrong sort of face to play the Queen in The Crown. He said she had a sort of left wing type face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we know what that means. <laughs> but that's how I look at her. She doesn't look like she comes from the same... I don't know, she just doesn't look like she comes from the same family. Yeah, and also, Kate has photoshopped uh, a sun watermark across yes. it, which, <laughs> um, which doesn't help things either. Odd. Anyway, good luck to her if she is out. I wish I her she well. Is. Let's hope there is uh, some sort of... I do... Th I mean, I heard um, our, um, our colleague uh, earlier, just, you know, on the previous programme, Patrick, saying that, the, 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 seriously, the Buckingham Palace press office have not handled this well at all, have they? I mean, they've lost control of it completely and, yeah. you know, it is time there might be people who are starting to feel genuinely quite unsettled by this yeah i mean i would say that this photograph has helped none at all i mean i'd much rather see the photoshop version of the instagram photograph where they sit as a family which yeah. i would never have noticed if somebody hadn't painstakingly pointed it out exactly. with this yeah even with my eyesight that just looks like it's like something out two... of these or something <laughs> yes. isn't it it's like <laughs> two tall people went to a farm shop <laughs> on something <laughs> that does not mean that kate's okay you are being challenged to say something <laughs> yeah. aren't you? it's the emperor's new princess. <laughs> anyway, speaking of uh, photoshopped portraits, um, there's one on the Daily Telegraph, but that's not their main story. It's not, no, there is a lovely photograph of the Queen and what we believe is uh, all of her great-grandchildren. But we don't know anymore. We just don't know something. <laughs> do we? It could be blooming anyone. But the, the headline um, that we're interested in is Reeves, and this uh, obviously is... Um, Rachel. Rachel Reeves. Uh, Britain faces 1979 moment. And I'd just like to say I was a 1979 moment for both my parents. Were um, you? Yeah, so conceived wow. and born in 1979. Whereas I was alert. 
uh, when Thatcher was elected. It was pretty much on my 14th birthday. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. So it's that was May, wasn't before. it? May the third. Yeah. And yes. this is what they're talking about. So Britain faces 1979 moment. Rachel Reeves will argue today. Today being tomorrow and Tuesday, as she vows that a Labour government would work with businesses to create a decade of national renewal. So she's pointing back to 1979. Obviously Thatcher came in in May, yeah. and 1979 was the end of this kind of terrible decade um, in terms of the economy for the 1970s. Also brilliant for music and all sorts of other cultural yep. reasons. Yep. Um, and, and then of course we went into the 80s and there was this huge boom and everyone had, you know, Blazers and it's interesting though. <laughs> I mean, there was a pre there was a discussion earlier, but we're coming on to this story about whether or not Thatcher is to be regarded as a villain in our national history, and whether or not she should be spoken of in the same breath as Hitler and Bin Laden, which are the big there. But, but it's interesting how the, the Labour Party obviously don't regard her in that in that light. They're, they're quite happy to say we're we're on the brink of a Thatcherite. <laughs> maybe not the exact same policies, but national renewal. But uh, yeah, I think here is trying to trying to attract uh, you know the more sort of aspirational people who yeah. you know you still you occasionally meet them on the left. Not usually. Usually they're they're just envious and bitter and want to steal money off you. Uh, but I mean this it's it's a ridiculous thing to say because uh, the the Labour Party now and the Tory Party now are the absolute polar opposite of. Yeah. Of anything Thatcher would do, they're, they're for big state. They, yeah. they want to tax loads, spend loads, uh, and and they have loads of red tape as well. So for business to thrive in those those situations is is ridiculous. No, you're absolutely right. It is fair to say though that although the Thatcherite revolution was an ideological one, it was underpinned by North Sea oil revenues, which abs absolutely yes, made that it often work. Gets That's forgotten. a thing we always overlook, but that yeah. was a big part of the. If we can find something like that, you know, let, let's oh, go. Well, I wonder if we did find it, they'd let us use it at the moment. Yeah, exactly. That would be, that would be, that, that would be to me, that would swing the vote, for Yeah, yeah. Uh, express, Leo. So the Prime Minister confirms he's still committed to the deportations timeline as migrants are chosen for the first flight to Rwanda in the spring. And that's this spring, not spring 2048, <laughs> uh, presumably. Um, although, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... So up to 200 have been selected. I mean, this could change everything. And they're going to be revealed. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be revealed on podiums that slowly yeah, yeah. rotate with, uh, with the dry ice. The migrants. Yeah. Yeah. 200 is <laughs> not even like an active Tuesday on the, on the channel, is it? I mean, yeah, it's not yeah, even... Yeah, yeah. It's not even a full-size travel lodge, is it? Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to wear? They've been selected as well. Sorry, Leo. You do this to, oh, there's just so much about this story that's ridiculous. Pathetic. Absolutely yeah. pathetic. He deserves to be laughed out of the country. He does. Uh, well, yeah, we could take one of the, one of the seats, maybe. But um, but the, in his in his favour, uh, the ten Lords amendments that were going to water down the Rwanda bill uh, were were uh, shut down by yeah. the government today, and it showed that the Tory party can still unite sometimes, because all the other parties were voting to keep these amendments, and uh, the Tory party united behind Rishi and, uh, and slapped them down and, and made sure it goes through. OK, so, I mean, do, obviously, do, do, you know, joking aside, it's meant to be a deterrent. We're not meant to deport millions of migrants to Rwanda, probably a thousand or something, and then people will know we mean business. And do you think it would work at this point? I mean, I just don't have it. I, when it first came in, I thought, well, it's so crazy, it might just work, but... You've got to do the ones that, like, as they arrive, it's yeah. like, as you set yeah. foot, you get taken. There's no point, like, because yeah. people know that, oh, they've taken those 200, I can still go yeah. and get, you know, all the, all the free stuff. Like yeah. a trapdoor to Rwanda at, <laughs> yeah. at Dover. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but this, this kind of policy, we talked a little bit about Thatcher. Thatcher sort of led from the front. She said, this is what I'm going to do. Like it or lump yeah. it, this is my vision, this is how we're going to do it. It was undiluted. Yeah. Now, it took her five to seven years to achieve a lot of her things, and people yeah. forget that. It didn't well, happen she would have overnight. lost if it hadn't been for the Falklands, wouldn't it? Well, exactly. Whatever you're saying, yeah. and, however, this is so diluted now, it's yeah. of no use to any of no. uh, These ten amendments, I don't care about any of that. Basically, you, you, if you're going to have a third-party country you're going to send illegal immigrants to, then just... Just do it. Yeah. Get the planes on the tarmac. Choose, choose more than 200. Don't yeah. select them like they've won a competition. Just we, we, we take them and they go. Ideally, like like the lion in Madagascar, you know, yeah. a, a, a stun gun and a crate. That Off would be go. the way to do it. And anyway, then... just finishing off very quickly, folks, the star... Uh, we've got, like, 30 seconds to pull. Big news here, yeah. This time next year, we'll be bullionaires. <laughs> so this is all to do with divers hope to start bringing up £13 billion worth in gold bullion from, Span from Spanish Galleon, uh, which the Brits sank 315 years ago, Simon. Amazing. I have a friend who has invested in an ongoing project to retrieve gold that is apparently at the bottom of the... Uh, is, it's not the Irish Sea between Britain and Ireland? Is that the Irish yeah, Sea? I think yes, so, yeah, yeah. 
uh, which was on its way over to pay war debt or something. Oh, right. right. Sank. So there's lots of this stuff down there, and wow. it's not as easy to isolate and identify. But once you get it, I mean, it definitely exists. Well, yeah, yeah. And of course, billion, the thing about gold is, you know, it's fine. Give yeah. it a one. Yeah, yeah. Give it a one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wish us well. That was the start of the British Empire, Drake's gold. <laughs> anyway, that's it for part one. In part two, a monarchy malarkey from Dan Busters to Sham Busters, and someone has grabbed Trump by the assets. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. GB News Breakfast, every day from 6am. Absenteeism and parents whose children miss a week or more of school face increased fines in a government drive to tackle absence. This is another one of those government policies which has done nothing to improve the education of our children. Mm. In fact, since this was originally introduced some 10 years ago, the educational standards for our children, the 11-year-olds who can't read when they go up to primary school, have got worse and worse and worse. So it's not working. So what do they do? They just increase the fine, like that may make it work. Most of the parents who get fined are taking their kids up so they can take them on a holiday before the holiday companies push the prices up. Mm. And frankly, as a parent, if I've got a £600 discount on my holiday versus a £60 fine, hmm. I'm going to go for the 60 You'll suffer fine. the fine. Yeah. yeah. Let's not forget the other huge absence that children had uh, recently uh, during COVID. Mm. Schools were closed for months and months on end. Online learning was really not making up for that. Yeah. So how could, you know, it's very difficult for the government to say it was fine for us to take your kids out of school for, for months. But if you take them off for a few days to go to Disneyland, then you are the worst parent ever and you should be... But also, be it's, it's, it's the pandemic that, that caused some of the problems with absenteeism now. Absolutely. Because the mental health issues that some of these children now have. And there are tens of thousands of children, they, they call them ghost children, that have simply disappeared from the school register. So it that would be nice. It's, it's really, really scary situation. Um, I'm not seeing that the government is, you know, taking great measures well to, i think know, one of their punishing. plans is to have a national register hmm. which, 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 would, which would help with that which would definitely help but i think it's it's almost it's you can't well, they can't deal with the real problem so they're going after it's... actually perfectly you know decent parents who are just taking the odd day off you know for to save money frankly I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners, your first look at tomorrow's top stories. I'm Simon Evans and I'm still here with Leo Kirsten, and Paul Cox. Leo, Tuesday's Telegraph now and the Russians have certainly scooped Nicholas Whittle here. So the Russian media falsely claim King Charles is dead. Uh, I mean, that's, the Telegraph is using the word falsely. Falsely, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, not, you know, no, yeah, I, I, I just think she said. They, they've just got an advance <laughs> on the, the news. Uh, but yeah, apparently this false statement announcing the death of the king has been circulated in Russia. The notice, which was purported to have been released by Buckingham Palace, said the king passed away unexpectedly yesterday afternoon. I don't know, this sort of shows you that Russian propaganda can't even get the right royal. This isn't the one everybody's speculating yeah. about right now. Uh, uh, or maybe, you know, maybe the maybe there's there's a lot of them. Not the not the British propaganda is much better. Like we can't even Photoshop a picture <laughs> of our royals uh, properly. But yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of these conspiracy theories floating about. But I'd just like to re reassure everyone that it's just because every 200 years, shape -shift shifting lizards have to go through a molting yeah. process and yes. return to their home planet for it. Absolutely. So that's what's going Once on. Once the full blood transfusion has been gone through, yeah, they've they changed the iron for copper. But, I mean, these, these cheeky Russians, they really are rascals. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, if I didn't know any better, I'd, bl I'd believe they weren't on our side. <laughs> uh, I mean, we did speculate that... 
Putin was very unwell. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it's absolutely, that's a fair point, actually. And, there was uh, a lot of speculation. And, and he's a serious leader as well, not just mm. a, a figurehead. And there's been no evidence of that since. No. He looks just as... Health. In fact, it turned out he had a better grasp of facts than several other senior I mean, uh, world leaders. <laughs> he, certainly, he certainly knew his uh, he knew his Russian and Ukrainian <laughs> history. It's <didn't> 13th, <laughs> 13th century <laughs> history. I mean, he's but got a bit too much of a grasp. I'm coherent account of it. I'm not in position to. We're not in position to say whether the 1850s, you know, <laughs> played out exactly as he said. I, I, I mean, the, the, I'm quite flattered in a way that the Russians are as bothered about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they could just as easily have gone Biden's dead, but they've gone for the king. That's quite nice in a way, right? Yeah, thank you, you Russia. Know. Yeah. Uh, it, it is very interesting. They it managed to trend, and it was trending all over the world. Mm -hmm. We kept seeing, you no. Know, uh, a royal announcement, royal announcement, all the way through X the whole time, and nothing ever came of it. And it never felt like anything was going to. No. Because, you know, when you when you look at the news cycle as much as we do, for instance, you, you do often get a vibe or a sense, don't you? Like when the King's cancer announcement came out. It, it, you know, it's quite a serious moment. It didn't feel like anything like that was happening yesterday. But it just goes to show that we can be easily played and manipulated via social media. Well, at the moment, we're all waiting to see what, you know, the actual deep fake AI chatbots and visual... You and so on are capable of. This is quite old school in a way. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? it's quite reassuring. It's a sort of mm. little bit of a nostalgic thrill. Anyway, staying with the Telegraph Ball, this feels like an AI news generator has been asked to create a story to summarise the betrayal of the last 80 years in a single uh, headline. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Home Office wastes millions converting Dan Buster's base into asylum camp. So, for those who don't know, RAF Scampton was famously uh, the base for the Dan Busters in Lincolnshire, and it was taken over by the ha Home Office in April last year to turn into an asylum camp for 2,000 migrants um, as part of this sort of £6 million, uh, to, to quell this £6 million a day asylum hotel bill yeah. that we're all paying for at the moment. But it has remained empty. They're now... Which, which is obviously a complete waste of money. I mean, it doesn't actually state or even speculate how many millions. It just says millions. And, you know, a quid's too much, to be fair. Yeah. So um, it means... It does mean, however, there's a bit of a silver lining to this. It does mean, however, the local, the local uh, West Lindsay Council may be able to go ahead with a £300 million plan to put in a, a large sort of aerospace technology centre and create a thousand and jobs. Wow. All, all of this is all of this is huge amounts of speculation. Uh, however, other than the fact that they they have taken ownership of it, they clearly spent money, and there's no migrants there. Yeah, which but is... they, you say they spent money. They haven't installed plumbing, have they? They haven't installed no. There's no electricity. So, okay, yes, yeah, a good point. Hey, um, there is no evidence they've spent money. No. That I mean, is a they, good point. there's been a compulsory purchase order or whatever it would be. And uh, then, uh, I mean, I don't know what state it was in previously. Was it just a, was it a heritage site or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it hadn't been developed, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, there were plans to develop it. And they've, they've installed 20 temporary cabins, but yeah, like you say, they're not connected to any utilities. You know what they should have? It's obviously a trampoline centre, right? For the damn Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should do <laughs> A lot of bouncy but, castles. Yeah, <laughs> but whatever they spend, uh, the deal that they've got with the Ministry of Offence, the Home Office have to return the site to its original condition before yes. it's handed back. So we're going to well, spend a whole bunch of money to turn it into, you know, some sort of migrant centre, yeah. then going to have to spend a whole bunch of money to turn it back. I like the idea of an aerodynamics or whatever you said it was, like it a, was an, uh, an avionics centre. Yeah, there. it was. An, uh, um... That would be amazing, because that would be amazing for two reasons. Obviously, because it's a heritage, uh, the tradition of the Danbusters, and also Lincolnshire is very... It's kind of poor real estate, right? It's pretty yeah. cheap, so, you know, it's, I, I, that usually reflects a lack of good jobs, so that would be a great place. I've long thought that's where we should be building into. The, uh, yeah. the Silicon Fen should be heading north from Cambridge and, all the way up there. And we should, instead, yeah. of, instead of placing migrants in communities that haven't asked for them, we should place them with the people who demand that they're allowed in. So yes. we, could, we should be able to requisition uh, Gary Lineker's house, the Guardian <laughs> offices, yeah. and just jam them, jam them full. Yeah, absolutely, whereas the people of Lincolnshire, who presumably are neutral on the these issues <laughs> can have some jobs. Yeah. Leo, this story, on the other hand, has clearly been designed with you specifically in mind. <laughs> so Sadiq Khan has more than 1,000 staff on six-figure salaries. Wow. So the London mayor has been urged to put a lid on fat cats as City Hall bursts at the seams with high-earning officials, according to a pressure group. Uh, so uh, uh, some of them, like 18 TFL employees, receive over a quarter of a million pounds a year That's each. A lot. 
yeah. this is this is I mean these are civil servants get or contractors or whatever getting paid insane amounts of money more than the and, prime minister and we're not getting an amazing yeah. service I don't know if you tried travelling on TfL but I mean it rarely works it's like it's pulled by a car horse and crime uh, the British Transport Police's crime recorded on TfL is up 58 percent and crime has been surging in London it's, it's ridiculous not the it's not the only thing that's been surging the precept which is the, the sort of surcharge Sadiq Khan can charge on top of council tax to pay for all this stuff it's uh, risen from 276 pounds when he came in and it's going to rise to 471 pounds uh, next year so so it's, in fact this this year 471 and I pounds. would like I mean I you know some some of these jobs can be high pressure a lot of responsibility but I would be intrigued to know just how many important decisions are made on a daily basis by yeah. a sort of deputy CNO running officer of TFL oh, this is nothing, nothing. To, it's all done on computers this is, this is nothing to do with actually running the business no. this is how socialism works they steal yeah. money from people's pockets from productive members of society and then buy votes and bribe name, the elites with these some these of the jobs. other uh, evil jobs but, so, <laughs> so, well, there's Sadiq Khan himself yeah. <laughs> we can, I mean, afuera did you, <laughs> did, you, did you write this article <laughs> I, this reads like you wrote this I mean 100,000 there's a lot of people at, uh, in these civil servants jobs on 100,000 pounds but 100,000 pounds in London is like 50 grand everywhere else 100,000 pounds for a senior civil servant if he's doing his job or her job well is not unreasonable 250 grand yeah. I think is a bit much on yeah. the public purse and as you can say Maybe one person at TFL should be on that, but yeah. like a whole raft of the second tier. So a lot of the, a lot of the people that are leading the sort of uh, the big projects are contractors and paid lots of money. They're paid more than the commissioner. Yeah. Because if you look deep in here, the, the commissioner's on probably le slightly less than 250 grand, whereas people running those big projects are on a lot more. So yeah. they're clearly on some sort of day rate. They're being yeah. brought in to deliver something. The trouble is when these things don't get delivered. What, what are you getting for your yeah, money? Exactly. There's no democratic process other than, you know, against Khan himself. You, nobody's mentioned a diversity officer, so I assume there wasn't one. Trust me, we they don't, they don't mention one. <laughs> but you know there, are, there is about 20 of them. It's assume, isn't it? Paul, nice carry on innuendo in the Daily Telegraph on Donald Trump's financial mm. woes. Trump may have assets seized well, hey. after failing to raise 307, £357 million fraud case bonds. So Donald Trump cannot finance, I'm not surprised, the $454 million, which is the £357 mm. million pounds, bond for the New York civil fraud case, his this lawyers is, have claimed. This is the one in which he supposedly overvalued his own assets in order to get more loans. So on the it. idea is that he fraudulently overinflated his asset price, yeah. cost, um, value, sorry, um, in order to secure loans. However, when you dig deep in that, the, the court itself values Mar-a-Lago Mar at Nine, 18 million pounds. It's ridiculous. Right? Which is probably what the driveway cost. Yeah. The, this place is this place is a country club with some of the best golf courses in Florida, it, and it's huge. But the the courts say, well, there's some sort of rule that means that it can only be used as a country club or something like that that says right. that it lowers the lowers the value. But it's like, I mean, it's obviously nonsense. I mean, this is this All is the right. establishment using lawfare against yeah. Donald Trump. And hey, I know everybody out there on in the internet thinks that I'm an establishment shell, a member of the Illuminati, who's uh, you know <laughs> secretly fed by a wire with Democrats ideas but no they use, they use lawfare against dissidents not just uh, not just in America but you know in, in this country you can see anybody who speaks out against the against the regime uh, is is taken yeah. down with all sorts of uh, all sorts of this, uh, criminality this and the the woman who was who he was accused of having interfered with in a dressing room in a, in a department store 25 years ago these two things have been used as a pincer movement I think it's genuinely quite dark I, I, I think yeah. it's disturbing yeah I genuinely do now of course let's 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 take out some of this sort of fraudulent aspect uh, sexual abuse aspect you know let's mm. part that for a minute quite clearly uh, this is very very political yeah very very political and one thing uh, you can admire about trump is that he has managed to lead this campaign to become uh, um the, the president again with all this going on in the background well it's only i mean it's creating a massive divide the chasm has never been greater yeah. anyone who supports trump will be doubling down on that right now and more determined than ever we've got time for one more story before the break
and the Expresslio. <clears throat> Finally, we might be getting a solution to the potholes that plague car journeys. <laughs> so, 150 mile per hour flying taxis could be in the UK by 2020, giving the economy a 45 billion pound boost, yes. according to somebody who's completely made all this up. <laughs> uh, and I don't think they really th thought it through. I mean, flying Ubers, uh, are we sure we want a lot of, you know, men named Mohammed airborne? That's, you know, have we not learned anything well, we in 20 keep, years? We can That's... keep the, <laughs> the ethnic aspect out of it. But I do think we... I mean, this is the thing about flying cars. They were always supposed to be part of the future. It's always the thing that's brought up. But nobody ever considers the potential for in-air collision, right? No, all of us probably read this and thought, about time. You know, we've right. been promised this the whole of our childhood. When are we going to get the flying cars? But, I mean... It doesn't tell us when we're going to get them. It does say there'll probably be some trial flights scheduled for 2026. Yeah. Mainly it's going to be drone deliveries and regular uh, sort of uh, emergency drops for, for 999, etc., etc. It does make a weird statement where it says um, the future might not rely on petrol because it might be in the skies. I'm thinking, well... What is it going to run on? Like gender recognition? How are they going to propel this stuff? Maybe not petrol. Well, it's kerosene is the is jet fuel as a rule, which is uh, just still, a dif I mean, differential distillation. I, I want to know if uh, these batteries can melt steel beams. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what I want to know. But yeah, where, where are the self-driving cars? Well, surely yeah. we'd, we'd get self-driving cars <laughs> yeah, before we be get much more straight to the air, man. Yeah. 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 Funnily enough, I mean, there are two... That, that will speed things up as well, because once we have self-driving cars, you won't have to park on the side of the road, so that will double the width of roads, effectively. Yeah, that yeah. will be quite an important aspect in terms of uh, speeding up. Yeah. Mm. Also, a good time to invest in property uh, on busy roads, because it will suddenly become a lot more appealing where, where, when it's all just electric self-driving cars, because currently that's always noisy. Yeah, cool. There's a little thought for you there, Paul, because I know you've got a few quid tucked away <laughs> and you're wondering what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, well, just, just as you were thinking, I was thinking, I'm going to invest as soon as I drive home. That's it for this Fly section. On. Stay with us for the third quarter with hate crime legislation and a Punch and Judy revival in the same week. Madness. See you in a couple of minutes. Hello and welcome to the latest GB News forecast from the Met Office. Rain spreads east during the next 24 hours, breezy along with that rain, but it does turn drier and brighter later on Tuesday. Weather fronts responsible attached to this area of low pressure anchored off the west of Scotland overnight and those weather fronts will bring outbreaks of persistent rain to the north and the west initially before transferring east. The rain does turn more showery, it tends to fragment through the night but still some of those showers will be quite heavy particularly in the north and the west. Not much rain reaching the southeast at all. In fact, some clear spells remain here. But with the cloud and the increased breeze, gales for the far northwest. Well, it is going to be a mild start to Tuesday, albeit a cloudy and a showery run. Quite, quite a lot of showers, I think, around during Tuesday morning. Breaking up into the afternoon to hit and miss downpours, most likely northern and central England seeing those downpours with some brightness either way. And actually feeling warm in any sunny spells, 17 or 18 Celsius, but more rain is on the way, spreading up from the southwest on Tuesday night and into Wednesday, reaching the Grampians and persisting through much of the day across eastern and northern England, Wales and the Midlands before eventually turning back to showers. Further outbreaks of rain to come on Thursday, particularly towards the northwest where it will be windy and cool, and then showers to come on Friday. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria De Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. 
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners. So, strolling to The Guardian now, Paul, with madness in legal news as mind reading and astral projection are no longer a defence to criminal damage <laughs> who would in the have, UK. Who would have thought it, Simon? Hey? Look, climate, change, climate protesters in England and Wales lose criminal damage defence. That's alarming on its own. We haven't seen that for a while. Appeal court says defendants' beliefs and motivations do not constitute lawful excuse for damaging property. In fact, they said the political or philosophical beliefs and the reasoning and wider motivation of the defendant were too remote from the criminal damage and did not constitute lawful excuse. Now, this feels like common sense. I haven't seen a lot of it lately, so I can't confirm because it's difficult to recognise. Yeah. But essentially, they've come to the conclusion that simply being angry about something... Well, if I've understood it correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the defence which they incredibly got away with was not that they were angry, but that they legitimately and reasonably believe that the owners of the property would <laughs> share their view yes. that what they were doing <laughs> to their property was more important, Mental. the reason that, that they would have wanted them to do it. Yeah. That's that they, really good... they had convinced themselves that they were doing it with the collusion of the people whose property it was. Why are you punching yourself? Why are you yeah, punching exactly. yourself? Even, I think, in one case, the person who created the artwork or whatever that was being destroyed would have... Like, if it was a Van Gogh painting... He would have agreed. Van Gogh would have agreed That's that... The, yeah, yeah. <sighs> It's incredible, really. And the fact that this was the Court of Appeal, so it had already gone through once, yeah. on that defence... Yeah. I think you have to assume highly motivated judging. I, I mean, yeah. it, which is, again, a really worrying trend. It's impossible if, you know, to ignore it. I mean, maybe it's not as new as it yeah. seems to me, but... It's not a good, not a good sign. Now, and also this this comment here from uh, from um, the, uh, the climate lobby that British law is being instrum instrumentalised on behalf of the fossil fuel industry. That's an absolute nonsense. Just yeah. stop oil. Are funded by big electric. They're funded by right. he's their biggest one of their biggest backers, Dale Vince, giving them like loads. I think over a, over a did not know a that. huge That's amount of money. Right. And he he runs Ecotricity. Yeah. Uh, and he obviously uh, reaps huge rewards he's from a... any. Any um, legislative change or any drive to, you know, put money into into net zero fuels? Dale Vince. Dale yeah. Vince, yeah. Even those initials are slightly sensitive. DV. DV isn't that direct voltage or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, direct voltage. <laughs> so what is the um, what is the new law? We can not we can lock them up now, can we? Yeah, it's just basically you can't. That just cannot be used as a defence. You can't you can't take what you assume someone else might think. And yet we or... still don't seem to have arrested that woman who sliced up Arthur Balfour recently. Mm. And chucked a load of she has not even been. There's nothing has happened there. She's on a yoga retreat in Goa right yeah. now, so she's, she she's going to be flying back first class soon. No, I mean, but they usually are. Yeah, <laughs> I, did. I do not like it. Sticking with legal matters, Leo, the Times fear the SNP hate crime legislation might actually prompt vexatious claims. Well, I'm sure oh, nobody would no, take advantage no, of it like knows. that, would they? No, you never get any bitter Scottish no. people. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So there's a warning that Scotland's new hate crime law may lead to police being swamped. So social media activists may swamp the police with bogus complaints based on excessive claims about what is covered by Scotland's reformed hate crime laws, a leading legal scholar has warned, but honestly, don't worry. These laws will be applied very selectively yeah. just to target the opponents of the SNP and anybody who criticises their ideology, like they did with Marion Miller. Yeah. So Marion Miller was a, was a mother uh, who, she, she, amongst her other crimes, for anybody listening on radio, I did the air quotes thing because they weren't crimes at all. She, she tweeted a picture of a suffragette's ribbon. Uh, the, the, the SNP's goons uh, mm. arrested her uh, for transphobic that hate was, crime yeah. because that was, um, it was perceived to be a noose. Somebody. Well, I mean, this whole thing rests on perception. It's ridiculous. We know who the SNP regard as potentially guilty of hate crimes because they released a helpful cartoon, haven't yeah. they? <laughs> Featuring the, the, the hate monster. 
Yeah. And, um, and it's young men, young white men from, yeah. from uh, troubled backgrounds, age 17 to 25. Yeah. That's it, basically. Basically me and Paul. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A Bash Street Kids version yeah, exactly. of you. I mean, if you make words illegal, inevitably, at some point, everybody's going to get yeah. found guilty. Yeah. And the, the trick always is with these things is that it... You might think, like, if it's in your favour and it protects the things that you're worried about, mm. you think, oh, this is fantastic. What, what you forget, and we always harp on about this, is that just down the road, it gets turned around and, and, and it's against the things that you think should be protected. And before you know it, you're the guilty party. And that's why we should allow for free speech. You know, we can't... What we need to do is teach a little bit of stoicism mm. in our society. Mm. But, you know, the fact that sticks and stones might break our bones, but words will never hurt us, there's a reason that that phrase lasted as long as it did because we should be able to stand you know our convictions should be strong enough that we are not affected by other people's words on the other hand i really do hope they arrest jk rowling because <laughs> i think that might just prove a turning point in the in the in the whole yeah i understand absurd what you mean absurd charade because she would thing. quite clearly be proven to be right there's, yeah. there's no legal case to answer mm. and it might just expose the whole damn thing wouldn't that be marvelous metro next paul and the vna is getting in on the one sure way to attract publicity to a pretty standard museum exhibit racket namely uh, hitler <laughs> yes and uh, and other people as well get to a museum lists margaret thatcher with hitler and bin laden as modern villains. So they are specifically talking about... Um, Punch and Judy. Punch and Judy, thank you. And the representation of the devil within Punch and Judy, yep. which has been has taken several manifestations. One is Hitler, uh, one is Bin Laden, one and lots of other people, but they chose to list three people, and the person they listed as the first person was Margaret Thatcher. I mean, she is, like equidistant on the timeline between those two. I yes. guess, you know, you go 1945, 1979, 2000... That's a really good point. You know. and, and to be fair um, to the uh, v &A, they just listed yeah. um, devil characters for Punch and Judy. People who have been unpopular in public... Pop yeah. However... Yeah, this wasn't really... Was this really worded in a way that, uh, that actually says that she is, is evil? It they're, they're just really saying... Not, not at all. I don't think the, so. The no. problem is the v &A are given £67 million Million pounds per annum right. from government funding to stay alive. Yeah. And those, obviously, that are in the Conservative Party, who see Thatcher as this great leader, yeah. um, have taken umbrage to it and they've said, look, you know, we're giving you loads of money here. Yeah. You didn't have to list her. Yeah. And they didn't. That's the only crime they committed. Yeah. But, you know, so what? So they did. I think but... it's... I personally think it's fine. And I do take against this sort of thing where they yeah. do try and find a moral equivalence. But I think they're just pointing out that Punch and Judy is a an opportunity to create an effigy of a, of a popular figure in, as, as a puppet. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, nobody would, would compare Adolf Hitler to, to Margaret Thatcher and Sam, Sam Bin Laden. I mean, I, I like Margaret Thatcher, but yeah. she's, not, she's not that good. <laughs> Didn't have she's the not dark charisma of a... No, I think the thing about this is it's being... It's, it feels like it's in a, a narrative, bit like the dark nationalism of Constable paintings and all the rest of it. We've seen so many stories in which museums are being sort of captured by woke narratives and all our uh, exhibits being It plays to their audience as know. well, though. Yeah. I mean, I've been to the V&A, yeah. but you, you, you only got to wander around there to see that most of them didn't vote for Thatcher. Yeah, that is true. Well, I think on this occasion I will give them a pass, but they've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Telegraph now, Leo. It sounds like solar is on its way to being too cheap to meter. So the world's largest solar company cuts thousands of jobs as prices tumble. This is in China, though. It's their, their giant company, Longi, which plans to axe 30% of staff amid ballooning solar panel supply gut. Apparently, the panel price, the spot price oh. for solar panels, is down 70%. It's been an wow. absolute uh, crash. And this is basically to, due to two reasons. So, um, what well, there's one reason, really, state subsidy. So state right. subsidy in China, they wanted to be, you know, the strategic owners of this industry. And they are, like... Apparently, yeah. up to 95% of the supply, complete supply chain for solar panels is Chinese. So if you want a solar panel, you've got to get it from China. So if it ever becomes you know, something you, you yeah. desperately need... That's amazing, because Germany had a really big stake in that not long ago. I think it was Siemens, that company, mm. were, yep, uh, Siemens, were huge yeah. on it. And, uh, and they've... Opened, well, that's extraordinary. Listen, we are um, we're, uh, facing a break. We'll be back in a moment for the final section with Siemens stealing, not Siemens. <laughs> Siemens stealing... <laughs> Cruelty-free cat food and something even more disturbing than those two images we'll see in a couple of minutes.
and Co. Weekdays from 6 p.m. Get this right. We all know by now, don't we, that so many uh, NHS workers are abused by people that they're trying to help. We'll all agree that that is pretty damn disgraceful. But what do we do about it? Because now uh, some London hospitals are looking at whether or not they should be able to ban people that do this for a year from those hospital facilities. Is that the way forward? Daniel, do you like this? No abuse, no excuse. That is the campaign. There's no other choice for most people. It's either the NHS or nothing. And if you're going to take that monopolistic power, then, then you need, I think, you have responsibilities towards people. You can't cut them off. So there are ways in which, of course, oh. you can bring criminal charges against them. Uh, if they've committed a criminal offence, that's fine. They might even be locked up in jail. But what you can't do is cut off health services because you're the only supplier. Well, yes, Peter? I think you can cut it off and you should cut it off. London is very different from everywhere else, and it goes back to our conversation about immigration. The majority of nurses in London are either African or Filipino, and it harks back to their nature and their culture. When you're younger, your parents look after you. When you're older, you look after them. They don't go into homes. So there's a way that a threshold of tolerance they have that is above and beyond most people. So, because I found, like, when I was younger, most of the nurses were white. Now they work in hospitals in Ascot and Somerset. London is the war zone. I have seen horrific things happen to nurses, and they stay, they show up for work. There's a protection they are owed, beyond owed. And if you abuse, if you abuse something that's offered to you as a part of your citizenship, you should be, there should be a penalty for that. For the same you. reason, if You're you can, obliged to if you use commit, it. There's no offer involved in and, the NHS. But it is, no, but there is an offer, because at there the end of the day, like, you, earn, you figure out how to get money and go private. So just because you've created something right, that so gives that's you the no, solution. no, it's easy. If you it's see, that's easy, an impossible solution. They've created something people. that's kind and easy and beneficial to all, indeed. But it's a good thing for all. Do not abuse it. That simple. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners for our final segment. Straight into Thursday's Telegraph, Leo, a very French answer to the housing crisis. So a French town is offering free marriage counselling to save money on housing. So this is... They've, they've really thought this through. Apparently, 50% of social housing applicants were single-parent families and 50% of their welfare budget was being dis distributed to single-parent families. So when couples break up, they become much more expensive uh, for the state. So they're offering uh, free couples and family therapy to residents in an attempt to help them stay together and reduce the financial burden of all this. I mean, or they could just do away with welfare and social housing yes. and let you know, nature deal with the problem. And then people would stay together just like they used to in the old days, yeah, you just, know, tough it out. Yeah. Just, like people, <laughs> just like people do in London, because there's no way you could afford yeah. the, like a one-bedroom flat. <laughs> I mean, I do think this is a big part, because we all talk about endlessly about the housing crisis, and, of course, migrants, you know, are in the crosshairs. But I think, actually, that fracturing families is, is a big issue, isn't it? Of course, yeah. other people... House shares. I was in a house shares until I was in my mid-30s, and yeah. I finally took a deep breath. And But, you know, it was easier to get on the housing ladder mm. a bit then, but it's not something I expected to do in my mid-20s. But I do think that is there is something to it, right? Yeah, mm. absolutely. And, I mean, without being too conspiratorial, I think... Or it feels as if marriage is vastly underestimated now in modern society. Yeah. In fact, this, this whole new... Undervalued. Yeah. Undervalued. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I meant. So, thank you. And so it, it's, it just doesn't hold that value in society anymore. People don't think... People see, people see it as almost traditional and conservative to yeah. be married. Yeah. Um, without, without taking into account all the things... Absolutely. They, they, they judge it 
on the same basis that they might judge other selfish decisions. Do I want to go there for my holiday? Do mm. I want to drink in this pub or eat in this restaurant? Whereas it used to be understood that it was sort of part of the social contract. Mm. Not that you had to, no. but there was a kind of understanding that you would, you would feed yourself back into and that. And neither do... Sorry, go on, Leah. With the, just the, the whole system says, you know, oh, having babies, getting married, it's, it's horrible, it's boring. Live like one of the Sex and the City yeah. girls. Man, those Sex and the City girls are all on antidepressants. They've yeah. gone through their 13th cat. They're all alcoholics. Man, what you want to do is have babies. It's the best and most fun thing. Absolutely, and you will have them one way or another. It just depends <laughs> on whether they're actually yours physically, you know, or let's, whether uh, they're something on you're that. projecting onto that's coming over on a raft. Anyway, <laughs> I think this in the Daily Mail, Paul, is the story in today's news which makes me most convinced that nothing makes sense anymore. No, are you talking about uh, the, the, people having uh, bab babies anyway is leading yeah, very yeah. much into... <laughs> this is terrifying, actually. There's, there's no two ways about it. Creepy $250 semen stealing kits are being advertised on X with taglines including make him a dad without his permission. <laughs> Extraordinary. OK, so uh, just soak all that up. Re pause it, rewind it, listen to what I said. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Texas-based company Make a Mum has flooded the site with posts of... Flooded. Flooded the site, yeah. yeah. Or dribbled the site. We've all flooded a site before now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Absolutely, Simon. First person videos showing people fishing used condoms out of waste basket baskets with captions like making him a dad without his permission. I do know that there are, um, I won't name names, but you probably know I'm talking about, more than one <laughs> lesbian comedian who has done very funny routines about how expensive it is to get hold of semen when they think of, you know, how much All the just gets like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they do have a point on yeah. that front. I mean, it is absurd to try and monetize it. Obviously, there are... The point is it's not all the same, is it? That's yeah. the thing. People try and pretend it is, but we, we all know it isn't. Yeah, and I think, you know, people are being a bit unfair on this company because most babies are conceived by one one person in, yeah. the, in the couple tricking the other one and yes. saying, you know, <laughs> you either leave it in to marinate a bit long or, you know, or you say, oh, you can... You can yes, do it tonight. Or just, <laughs> or just a, uh, a, a mistake on both parties. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Just, you know, I've said, historically speaking, most people are like Marmite, a byproduct of the brewing industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's still a beautiful thing. So this could solve the fertility crisis. It should be on the NHS. Absolutely agree. Well, Leo, you are named after a cat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of this next story? I'm, I'm not named after a cat, I'm named after a star sign, but yeah, would oh, you okay. feed would you feed your feed your cat lab grown meat? My brother's called Sagittarius. <laughs> would, would you feed your cat lab grown meat? The world's first cans of cultivated pet food are created in the UK. So they take samples of eggs, uh, samples of cells from a chicken egg, yeah. uh, they culture them in the lab where they add vitamins, minerals, amino acids to grow into meat and they're yep. sort of nurtured into in a container that controls the temperature and the acidity. And then they say there are no unwanted chemicals, bacteria or other nasties in our meat. It's like, are you sure? <laughs> it sounds like there are. I don't know. I wouldn't mind this at all. We have a cat, and I honestly don't think he'd mind, but I've got a horrible feeling it's going to be more expensive because it's going to be branded as an ethical alternative. Yeah, yeah. Rather oh, than... That's a really good point. You say your cat wouldn't mind. The first thing that struck me when I listened to this was... Would would my cat Wilson eat it? It's very unlikely. Yeah. I mean, he he, he, I don't, he would probably detect it. He's that sort of cat, just to wind me up. If it if it's fifteen quid cheaper, yeah, yeah, he won't eat it. No, <laughs> you're gonna have to present it like, no, Wilson, you mustn't have that. Well, perhaps just this once. Yeah. <laughs> Staying with affordable abominations against God and nature, Paul. The male have ant flavored crisps. What is with going an on here? Tang of urine. <laughs> <laughs> Would you try ant flavoured crisps? No and good night. <laughs> uh, but scientists claim the insects have a nutty, sweet, and caramel like flavour, but warn that they can leave an aftertaste of urine like off flavours. Yeah. Now, the thing about that last statement suggests that there is this kind of palette and range of wee flavour that yeah. we're all unaware of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this I is don't like the warm off flavour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm OK with some of the sort of more like early nice morning... grassy, gooseberry, <laughs> sort of Sauvignon Blanc wee, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> disgusting. Although Leopold Bloom in Ulysses, the very first thing you learn about the main character in Joyce's Ulysses is that he likes eating the organ meats of uh, birds and fowl and especially the kidneys with the after-tang of urine. So oh. perhaps there is a... Uh, perhaps there's a market for yeah. it. Yeah. It's a 
great moment. We're, we're, we're being encouraged to eat insects at the moment, but all the people encouraging us to eat insects look terrible, like Bill Gates, yeah. Yeah. Klaus Schwab. Right. This is the warm-up. This is what is more yeah. sinister, joking yeah. aside. First of all, you buy the flavour of crisp, and then you go, oh, I can have the actual ants now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> from, yeah. And I mean, my cat can enjoy them in yeah. a lab this, grown That's format. such a good point. These last two stories are really dystopian. <laughs> the show is nearly over. Let's take another quick look at Tuesday's front pages. Telegraph kick off with Reeves. Britain faces 1979 moment. Is Labour about to reinstall Thatcher? Daily Mail. Harry and Meghan are downgraded by the palace and a dubious photo of Kate. <laughs> Mirror. I will not let you down, says Keir Starmer. iNews. Energy customers set for payouts worth billions in a scandal that's bigger than PPI. We didn't cover that. Sorry. Express. Migrants chosen for first flight to Rwanda in the spring and the Daily Star finally this time next year. We'll be billionaires. We're going to get all that old gold. That's it for tonight's show. Thanks to Leo and Paul. Headliners is back tomorrow with me, Josh Howie, and Stephen Allen at 11 p.m. If you've been watching at 5 a.m., stay tuned for breakfast. Good night. A brighter outlook with Box Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello and welcome to the latest GB News forecast from the Met Office. Rain spreads east during the next 24 hours, breezy along with that rain, but it does turn drier and brighter later on Tuesday. Weather fronts responsible attached to this area of low pressure anchored off the west of Scotland overnight and those weather fronts will bring outbreaks of persistent rain to the north and the west initially before transferring east. The rain does turn more showery, it tends to fragment through the night but still some of those showers will be quite heavy particularly in the north and the west. Not much rain reaching the southeast at all, in fact some clear spells remain here but with the cloud and the increased breeze, gales for the far northwest, well it is going to be a mild start to Tuesday albeit a cloudy and a showery run. Quite, quite a lot of showers, I think, around during Tuesday morning. Breaking up into the afternoon to hit and miss downpours, most likely northern and central England seeing those downpours with some brightness either way. And actually feeling warm in any sunny spells, 17 or 18 Celsius, but more rain is on the way, spreading up from the southwest on Tuesday night and into Wednesday, reaching the Grampians and persisting through much of the day across eastern and northern England, Wales and the Midlands before eventually turning back to showers. Further outbreaks of rain to come on Thursday, particularly towards the northwest where it will be windy and cool, and then showers to come on Friday. Looks like things are heating up. Box spoilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. is ticking on your chance to win the Great British Giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Didn't quite believe it and still can't. Uh, and if I can win it, anybody can win it. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and Privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment.
Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 till 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria Di Piero, bringing you... PMQ's Live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's Live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Good afternoon, good evening even, and welcome to Farage with me, Camilla Tomini. Do not adjust your set. I am not Nigel Farage. Where could he be? The last time I think I covered for him, he was in the jungle. Uh, you can have a bet as to where he might be. Um, I'm going to tease you until I actually reveal where he is and what he's doing. But he is doing something.